Fantasy Football Fix have the best FPL tools to help you win your mini leagues this season, as you can track the world's best managers live with the Consensus XI, which is a combination of managers posting up 80 top 10k finishers teams averaged out into one squad, which you can track every single week. You also get instant team change notifications before each game week, so you can stay up to date with your squad. So get started free now with the link fantasyfootballfix.com. Hello FPL managers and welcome back for another video. Today we are going over our final locked in team for game week one. I've put a lot of time and effort into this team. This team has seen a lot of changes, but I'm very, very happy with the 15 man squad and it is pretty much confirmed for the new FPL season. If you guys are new to the channel or are looking forward to game week one of FPL, leave a like and subscribe. As always, have those notification bells turned on as we're going to be uploading so many FPL videos for the start of this season. So stay posted for that. And with that being said, let's jump in into the video. So first off, let's go over the goalkeeper options. Currently, Onana is my Game Week 1 goalkeeper. I'm a massive fan of Manchester United's fixtures to start the season, and that is a main reason why Onana is one of the highest-owned keepers coming into Game Week 1. Man, you have some very, very good fixtures. We saw at the, uh, the back end of last season... De Gea did very, very well in goals for Man U as well. They were especially good at home in terms of picking up clean sheets. Manchester United last season, so to start off game week one with Wolves at home, I think it's a great chance to get Anana's clean sheet tally rolling. He should have a decent balance of safe and clean sheet potential this season as well, but just definitely a handy thing with those Man U keepers. It was definitely the case uh, towards last at the back end of last season. De Gea picked up a lot of clean sheets, but also had some really good safe points as well. De Gea was a keeper that iron for quite a bit of last year and I was very happy with him. So I think Onana, as his replacement in that Man U goal, should do very, very well. And Manchester United obviously don't just have a good game week one fixture. They have very, very good fixtures for the first five to ten game weeks. So I think Onana, a great starting keeper. And to see him at 5 mil, at a little bit cheaper than some of those other premium options in terms of Edison and Allison, I think makes him a very good pick for this game week. Moving on to the defenders, I've gone with a back three in a 3-5-2 formation. A Stupinian, Gabriel, and Chilwell are my three starting defenders. Estupinian really hasn't moved from the team since my first draft for game week one. I think he's such a good pick. I was expecting him to come in at 5.5. Seeing him at 5 million pounds, I think he's such good value. Was very, very good last season for Brighton. And I think he's only going to improve this year. Brighton, they have some excellent fixtures to start this season. Obviously, Luton at home where game week one, a very, very good fixture. Estupinian has excellent attacking potential. He gets so far at the pitch for Brighton and actually ranked in the top five defenders for assists, attempted assists, and expected assists last season. So considering that he's a lot cheaper than some of those other players that he was rivaling for attacking underlying numbers, it just makes him such a good value pick. So I'm a huge fan of Purvis Estupinian. Gabriel is my Arsenal defender of choice. He probably is their most nailed defender. It's going to be interesting to see what Arsenal do with their fullback situation. Obviously, Timber got the nod for the uh, Community Shield. It's going to be interesting to see uh, how that plays out across the season with Zinchenko and Ben White obviously already in those fullback positions last year. So I think going for the centre-backs could be a little bit safer. There's going to be a lot less rotation in this position. So Gabriel, a very, very good at defensive option. And I'm keen on having at least one Arsenal defender in there. And I do want to have an Arsenal triple up our four game week one as well, which we'll go over a little bit later as Arsenal's fixtures are so, so good to start the season. Probably the best fixtures in the first five out of any team in my opinion. Ben Chuel as well is my third starting defender. I think he's a really good pick. Liverpool at home in game week one isn't the easiest fixture, but Chelsea's fixtures do get so much better. They probably have some of the best defensive fixtures from around game week three through eight. I think they've got some really, really good fixtures. Chua has had an excellent preseason for Chelsea under new management. He's still getting very far at the pitch. Obviously, with some injury concerns elsewhere in that Chelsea defense, I think Chua will be getting the nod for a lot of games to start the season. Should be fairly nailed in that fullback role gets far up the pitch. He's been providing goals and assists throughout pre-season. He's taken a few shots on as well. So I like Ben at Chiuel for those reasons. I think Chelsea could pick up quite a few clean sheets to start the new season, uh, given their fixtures. Let's look at the midfield of five now. It's a very, very good midfield. Five are uh, very good players, in my opinion. I think they're all very strong midfield assets in their own right. Martinelli, the most differential one. The other four midfielders already fairly highly owned in Saka, Fernandez, Matoma, and Rashford. Four of the highest owned midfielders coming into game in kind of FPL. 
I was tossing up whether or not I wanted to go Salah in midfield. Obviously, with Foden, I think he's going to be a bit of a doubt to start for Man City. He was in my team in the last few days, but he's recently just come out after seeing that Community Shield uh, team from Man City. Foden didn't start there. De Bruyne came off the bench, so I think Foden is a good chance for some rotation early on this season, so I've gone off him. And then I wasn't a fan of Bruno Fernandes massively, but I still think with him on penalties and free kicks and corners, for Man New Singham, £8.5 million pounds plus having good fixtures, he should make a good start to the season. So what I was thinking of doing was Fernandez and Martinelli out. I upgrade one of them to Salah, downgrade the other one to a 4.5 mid. If I do that, though, the bench will be looking very, very weak to start the new season, and I will have to play Henry, who's currently on my bench, who's got Spurs at home. So I think for now, going with no Salah is the right decision. I can move to him later on in the season if I want to. But I'm happy coming into Gamacom without Salah as these five midfield picks are still very, very good. Obviously, Saka, he's already nailed in the team on pens for Arsenal. Scored his pen in the Community Shield. Got himself an assist in the Community Shield as well. He's been very, very good throughout Arsenal's preseason. He's not going anywhere. Bruno Fernandes, he is a late into the team. I do have 0.5 left in the bank. I am slightly tossing up this Fernandes pick as to whether or not I could upgrade him to Son as well at 9 mil. I think seeing Son's price at so low makes him a very tempting option, but right now Fernandez is currently in my team. He is a very high end midfielder, so it's a little bit safer going for him, as if he does score well and I don't have him in my team, my rank could be seriously damaged. Matomo at 6.5, very good pick. I think Embuemo as well could be a really good option at the same price. He's on pens for Brentford, whereas Matoma probably isn't on pens for Brighton, so that is an extra advantage of having Embuemo, but Matoma once again with a high ownership, I wanted to play it safe, go with him. He was very good last season, to be fair, and Brighton probably have better fixtures than Brentford to start this new season, especially their game week one fixture. Martinelli, I think, is going to be an excellent differential, was superb last season for the Gunners. Arsenal have great fixtures, and seeing him at 8 mil, a little bit cheaper than the likes of Fernandes and Rashford, I think he's a very nice value option. And of course, Marcus Rashford rounds out in the midfield. He's one of the most popular midfield picks, and with very, very good reason. He was excellent last season for Man U. He's got Wolves at home game week one. He scored in the reverse fixture against Wolves last season, so I like Rashford to get amongst the goals in game week one. Hopefully, him and Fernandez can combine for a good performance at Old Trafford. Looking at the current uh, starting two strikers as well, I've gone with Darwin Nunes. He's a bit of a differential in this team. I think with uh, Nunes, Martelli, and Chuel in here, we have three Fairly solid differentials coming into game week one. Nunes, he's a player that I wanted to have in the Liverpool attack to sort of give me a little bit of cover for not having Mo Salah. Obviously, if I don't have Salah in, I don't have Nunes in, I don't have anyone in that Liverpool attack, and I think they are a very, very good attacking side. So I wanted to have at least one play in there to cash in on their goals, especially I wanted to have them in for game week two, where they faced Bournemouth at home. They put nine goals past Bournemouth last season. So I think uh, by having one of their attackers in, it allows me to score, or should allow me to score well for game week two. Hopefully, either Nunes or Salah uh, will get amongst the goals in that Bournemouth fixture. Darwin Nunes uh, has had an excellent preseason, so I wanted to have him in the team. Chelsea away game week one. Once again, not the easiest uh, fixture, but uh, as I said, Bournemouth game week two, plus the fixtures after that for Liverpool do get a lot better. And after the preseason for Nunes, I think he could be a good differential. Currently the third highest owned forward, but his ownership's only sitting at around 15 to 17%, so fairly low when you compare him to some of those other popular options in the game. And Erling Haaland, of course, he has to be in the team, takes the captain's armband. I don't really see me taking the captain's armband off Haaland too much this season just because he's so consistent in picking up goals for Man City and I'm sure he's only going to go from strength to strength with more experience in the Premier League. Let's have a look at the bench. Ariola is currently the sub keeper. He's a nice pick at 4.0. Rico Henry is sitting there at 4.5. He does have a slight injury concern, but I think he is going to be good to go for game week one. At Brentford, not with the best fixtures for game week one, Again, obviously with Spurs at home there, but after that, they do have some pretty good fixtures. Henry, are probably the most attacking defender in that Brentford defense, and they were a very, very strong defensive outfit last season, so I wanted to have have one of those guys in there, and they probably have some of the better fixtures amongst the good 4.5 options. I could go with Botman at 4.5. He's a popular pick at that price point, but Newcastle's fixtures aren't the greatest to start the season, and Henry does have more attacking potential than him. 
So that is why I wanted to go for Rico Henry here. Uh, Gabore here from Luton Town. He's my 4.0 defender. Should be fairly nailed on in that fullback role or wingback role uh, for Luton, should I say. Probably going to be their most attacking defender at 4.0. You could go for Bell, but he's probably going to be playing in a centre-back role. So Gabore going to be a little bit more attacking. Luton Town, one of the best defensive records in the championship last season. Definitely one of the best out of the three teams that have been promoted. And they do have some pretty good fixtures to start the new seasons to be uh, to be fair as well. Brighton away, Gamic one, not the easiest, but after that, uh, Luton's fixtures are fairly promising. So if I do need any type of rotation in the team, maybe I pick up some injuries early. Kobore does give me that extra bench depth, having two playing defenders there. And then Mubama is my 4.5 striker. Especially after Skamaka left West Ham uh, just recently in the transfer window. He is a sneaky chance for some minutes off the bench. Obviously, Antonio and Ings are getting on in age. There is a chance of injury there, and it could come to a point in the season where he may need to be utilized. And if he can come off the bench for one point here or there, it is always handy to have that player there at 4.5 sitting on your bench. So looking at this team, it's coming in at 99.5 mil squad value. So it does give me 0 0.5 left in the bank. I could maybe upgrade Fernandez to on or look to upgrade Kabore to a 4.5 defender to give me even more flexibility. But right now, as it stands, I'm happy having this money in the bank. Of course, it gives me a little bit flex, a little bit more flexibility later on in the season to make upgrades in the team. So I'm happy to leave the money in the bank here. I don't really need, uh, see the need to spend more on this starting eleven. I'm very happy with the team. It's also another advantage of not having Salah is it allows me to have more money in the bank. If I do have Salah in the team, I have 0, 0.0 left in the bank, and then I'm only going to have one playing defender, which would be Kabore. So currently, I'm happy with no Salah. I was really trying to make it work, but I just don't think it's going to be able to happen. For for game week one, so I think this is the team I'm going to be going with. I'm very, very happy with this side, and I'd be interested to see what your guys' team's looking like as well as the Prem does start in just a few days. Thanks for watching today's final draft for Game Week 1 of FPL. I hope you guys enjoyed this one. If you did, leave a like and subscribe. Also, drop your teams down in the comments below. I'd be interested to go over those teams. Are you guys fully locked in right now? Or are you looking to make more transfers come the Game Week 1 deadline? As always, have those notification bells turned on so you don't miss any future FPL videos before the start of the new season. With that being said, I'll see you guys in the next one.